Hi, my name is Justin AK Ghost Reader, and today I'm going to be doing a review of queer baiting and fandom teasing fans through homework erotic possibilities, edited by Joseph Brennan. Uh, this was released by the University of Iowa Press and is in the stores now. Uh, this is a book I got from NetGalley, so I want to thank NetGalley and the University of Iowa Press for giving me uh, this book. Um, so I was going through uh, NetGalley one day and saw this uh, particular book on there and thought, oh, this would be really interesting. Um, topic to explore um i don't really know, didn't really know much about queer baiting going into this um but uh definitely learned a lot about it by, while reading this book so basically this book is a series of essays um and split into three parts um so in each part there is a series of essays and then smaller thought pieces which are not that long to read um exploring the topic so and the first part is kind of about like the history of queer baiting uh, the second part is more about queer baiting in like TV shows and popular culture, uh, TV shows and movies. And then part three kind of goes into queer baiting in alternative forms like manga, um, cartoons, celebrity queer baiting, and so on. So uh, basically queer baiting, for you who don't know, um, is still like a definition still kind of being defined. But uh, from what I got from the book and kind of what each of them based their definition on is that queer baiting is when... Um, Queer uh, fans are teased by the, generally, it's, you usually see this in TV shows, but we're going to see different forms of media where they are teased the possibility of two characters getting into a queer relationship, but it's only teased and is never actually fulfilled throughout the course of the show. Uh, or is at the very, very end when risk to the producers uh, and, or, you know, to the profitability of the show is practically gone. Uh, oh, well, there's no risk to the show at all. Uh, or uh, during the course of the show, like the producer puts down the fans' theories about the fact that two particular couples, uh, or a particular couple is going to happen and it's queer, um, even though everyone seems to see that in the subtext of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the media. So uh, basically, uh, they go through a kind of scholarly look at, at how queer baiting came to be a term associated with this phenomenon. Um, how we came from just homoerotic reading to subtext to having a queer relationship shown in our media, but now more so just being a tease to kind of get queer fans invested into into the show. Um, and they explored uh, Supernatural, uh, which um, there's been a big uh, um, queer baiting has been associated with Supernatural, uh, Sherlock. Uh, there's one essay about queer baiting and Harry Potter, and more specifically, uh, like the, the the play. I think it's the Cursed Child or Cursed Son. I forget. Um, and so they look at this. They look at the fans' response to queer baiting in those in these types of media, and also look at um, the producers' responses, the people who are part of these things, their response to their fans, and kind of see like how the the dynamic between the two, where fans are now uh, demanding more from their producers, since they feel that we've made enough strides that um, showing queer relationships on TV should not be that big of a deal. Um, and so, I think that each of these essays does a really good job of exploring. Um, uh, different aspects of queer baiting, whether it be in TV, uh, whether it be with celebrities. So I think the two that they showed were Harry Styles and Nick Jonas, and looking at fans' responses to different things that they were doing, and whether or not they were actually queer baiting the fans, and if they were, uh, was that something that the fans wanted? If not, um, it, like it looked like sometimes that was what they wanted, and the other times some of the fans were like, no, that's not what we wanted. So it, it's it was really, it's it can be muddled in some way because some people argue, well, you just, you kind of see what you want to see in some of these cases, but some people are like, no, it's just that it's there and they're putting it there for us uh, because they want us to look at it, but because they want to get us invested in their media. Um, and they're doing it with that intent, but they also intend never to follow through with it. And so it becomes this thing about intent. And if it is intentional, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Most said that it's a bad thing, you should just go ahead if you're going to tease it, you should just go ahead and, and show it on the screen. Uh, so yeah, I thought this was a very good um, exploration of queer baiting and fandom. If you have no idea what queer baiting is, this would be a good introduction to the topic. This is actually the first book, as far as I know, uh, on the on the topic, like a scholarly like collection of, of pieces together in a book form on this topic. I think there have been tons of papers written about it, uh, but I think it's the first book where 
different people who have written about it in the past have come together and put their work together in one piece to examine um, this uh, queer baiting. So I thought it was, it was a good um, examination. I learned a lot about it. Um, and uh, I give this book a four out of five stars. So um, if you if you um, are interested in the phenomenon of queer baiting um, or you like Supernatural and want to see like what um, the the uh, conversation about queer baiting in that show was or in Sherlock or anything like that, this would be uh, a good book uh, for you. So uh, with that, I'm going to end this review. Let me know how I did in the comment section below. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at GhostReads28, on Instagram at Justin the Ghost Reader, and on Goodreads. The link to that is down in the description box below. And as always, keep reading.